So we're super excited to have you here today. Andy is going to take over and talk about yes, gener um, genetic affairs, not generic affairs. Generic affairs. You can just settle down so we can get through this intro. <laughs> um, and then after that, be sure to um, check the link in the description. I have to pop, pop it there. I'll do it here in just a moment. There is a live webinar um, for FHF Extra members. This is the um, virtual version of the live presentation that I did at Roots Tech about passenger lists. If you're not a member, you can do that now. Click the join button. It's $2.99 a month and you get access to the webinars and the handouts. And there's a huge library of content that is on the channel that you can access right away. And you can totally binge and have your Family History Fanatics Conference of Content. Um, there's videos by myself and Andy, and then we do at least two presentations each month just for our members. So go ahead and hit the join button, and then you can get the handy dandy leaves that are beside our channel member names, and you can use those fun super icons. Um, we can't show it because our platform, when we pull your content in and you use the chess pawn or the whiteboard, it doesn't show it, but you guys can have it in the chat and it's really kind of fun. So that's an app. It is Andy's turn to take it away with genetic affairs. All right. And just so you know, it is snowing here in New Mexico. So if the power goes out and the stream dies, that's why. Um, and Kathy, uh, Christy just became a new channel member just like that. And she's like big green all over. So happy St. Patrick's Day, Christy. Okay. I guess I need to actually, oh, I just removed it. There we go. All right. So we're going to be talking about a tool on the Genetic Affairs website. Um, let me just go to the regular Genetic Affairs. Get that out of the way. Geneticaffairs.com. And um, Genetic Affairs is the website that was created by EJ, right? Not the other guy. Um, EJ Blum, the, one of the most handsome genetic genealogists there are, but they are in a close running with the guys from GEDmatch and, of course, my husband. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> we should go and visit him while we're over there in the summer. <gasps> anyway. You can see him in person, get a picture. Stay focused. <laughs> All right. So the Genetic Affairs website has several different tools that you can use with data from some websites, not all websites. Now, you might have seen similar tools on websites like GEDmatch or MyHeritage, and that is because they've licensed those tools from Genetic Affairs. So typically, you're going to be using 23andMe and Family Tree DNA on Genetic Affairs because to use the other tools, you'd actually go to the MyHeritage website or the GEDmatch website. Now, do you have any questions about that? I haven't been listening because I've been putting in the link. Sorry, I'm not <laughs> listening. Here's the link to the um, passenger list. Sorry. <laughs> I'm listening now. What did you say? So, My Heritage <laughs> yes. and Jed Match. Yes. They've licensed some oh, of these. Yeah. I did see that, actually. You did see that. I did see that. So, you can use 23andMe and Family Tree DNA on genetic affairs. That's right. Any questions about that? No, that's straightforward. What about other companies? Oh, you wanted me to ask that question? Yeah, you're supposed to ask that. Sorry, I'm I'm neglecting my job. <laughs> um, what about the other companies, dear? Which company? Uh, Living <laughs> DNA, Ancestry, and Family Tree DNA? No, Family Tree DNA. You can I'm use. sorry. I just heard my heritage in 20. I know, you just heard that. So Ancestry, and that's probably the first one that anybody thinks of just because they're the largest database. <laughs> Stacy's right. Ancestry does not like to play in other people's sandboxes, basically. And um, Ancestry, we love you, but you don't give us the tools people like, so. Yeah. Um, well, no, no, I shouldn't say that. More tools that people like more. Because you do have the, a couple of new tools, which we made some videos about. And if you haven't watched that, you'll want to check those out later. Yes. Okay. So. We have the website. Now, it is a membership website. You can sign up for free and you get um, a few analyses from signing up for free. And basically, it runs off of a sort of subscription model slash credit model, which is I think is something that's more popular in Europe with different websites as opposed to the United States. So you can actually subscribe for you know $5 a month, which will give you a certain number of tests that you can run each month. Or... 
you can just buy credits when you need it. And that's what I do. Um, and they have lots of tools. So if you've heard of auto clustering, auto trees, auto kinship, which we're going to talk today, auto segment, um, those are all tools here on the Genetic Affairs website. And so the one we're going to be talking about today is the auto kinship tool. All right. So I'm going to first go over to the little tutorial on there because it is helpful in a lot of ways to know, hey, what should you expect? What are you going to have and what are you not going to have? Now, you'll notice first off, hey, this is talking about running my heritage auto clusters and the auto kinship from that because this is licensed on my heritage as well. But running it on genetic affairs is going to be nearly identical. You just have to select which one you want to do. So you can go through and read this and I'm trying to get down to the kinship. Um, there are different ways that using this, we can be able to help determine what relationship you are with some of your matches based on other matches that you have. Okay. So I'm going to go back here and we'll talk about this. Okay. So we have the name of the tested person. And for this, we're going to use, oh, I got makeup on you. The keyboard now sorry we're going to use my should we use my grandmother because i usually use my grandfather but let me use my grandmother this time jeanette brewer okay there's some information that you need to be putting in to help zoom in hmm? zoom in zoom in oh make this bigger yes please Woo, too big there there's here's the max trees to report, and there's a little handy information icon. The identified trees are ranked, specify how many of the top ranked trees should be reported if available. And for this, I'm just going to leave it at the 10. You can change that to a higher number or a slightly lower number. Why are you choosing 10? Is that just a good starting point? That's a good starting point. Usually on almost all of these tools, they'll have a pre-selected, which is probably a good place to start. And then as you do what? Keep going. Okay. As you do your analyses, you can try it. Hey, what's the next level? And see what the results are. And then you can go and choose the next level and the next level. All right. The max differences in generations. And again, you can choose the different generations. Okay. And set the generation level tested person. Okay. So when generation information for some DNA matches are specified in the left table, that's this table over here, which we haven't filled out yet, it is possible to set the generational level for the tested person as well. Okay. So we have to know some information to be able to put in other information. The Santa Morgan probabilities. This is something that has been actually in a discussion on several Facebook boards recently. DNA testing companies all use slightly different metrics to compute the CM scores. Select the CM probabilities option that best match your input data. So if you are primarily using input from one company or another, then you want to switch the probabilities to this as opposed to just using another one. But that there's nothing that prevents you from trying it out in different ways. One moment, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, how did you get to this screen? Can you back us up just a moment? I can. So when you've logged in, you get to this home page for yourself because you can tell it's telling me hi. Mm -hmm. And this is just going down to the run auto kinship. Okay. All right. The next one here is the Watto trees. Now you can create this on DNA Painter. So this would be a different website to go to to create a water tree and save it. And then you can upload it into the Genetic Affairs website for this for it. 
Um, key here, like it says, make sure you use the exact same names as for the shared DNA matches. So you can't mix and match on that. You have to use the exact same names. So there is some work as far as setting up, you know, all of these different parts. Okay. Now you can go in and you can manually input information on this table, or you can come in and you can bulk import data. And that's, you know, Devin likes that much better. Um, and this is just going to be a copy and paste. All right. So let's so you collect the shared match information in a spreadsheet. Next, copy all, copy and paste all. So what we need to do is we need to go down to one of the websites and we need to download a shared match list onto a spreadsheet. And then we need to import this. Okay. okay. Several different steps there. Have but, we done videos about that? But, or are you yeah, well, show us how to do that? Those are ones that I need to do videos on now. I say that because you'll notice here, there's another one called the Run the Auto Kinship for 23andMe. And with Genetic Affairs, if you have already connected your Genetic Affairs account to your 23andMe or your Family Tree DNA websites, like I have here, then what we can do is we can go and take a look at our profiles, and we can just run this directly from the profile. So Jeanette is right here. And there is the option to run the auto cluster, the auto kinship, auto segment. We're just going to run the auto cluster because we want to get to the results and see what they look like. So I clicked on the do the auto cluster. And this is basically essentially going to be doing a lot of the same things did I click the auto cluster or the you auto kinship? You did the auto cluster. We're supposed to do the auto No, kinship. I did the auto kinship. Oh. Sorry. That's yes. confusing. Yes, it is because there's, it's like all merged in together okay. type of thing. All right. So auto cluster, auto kinship, these tools are, are, are related. They connect together with different things. And um, you can see over here, auto kinship calculate trees from 23andMe clusters. Okay. Okay. So if we didn't want the auto kinship, then that would be unchecked. Okay. Now, when we're doing our auto cluster or when you're creating your match list to actually be able to share with the auto kinship, you probably want to put in some parameters to limit the matches. Now, first off, you have the start your auto cluster analysis with matches. And this is your upper limit. So, if we, oh, you can't see the drop down. No. So the drop down goes all the way up to 4,800 centimorgans, which Imagine would basically be, drop down. which would be everybody. Um, and when you can think about it, if you look at, okay, who do I cluster with my siblings? Well, almost everybody you cluster with your siblings just because you share so much DNA. So then if we drop it down to, let's say, an 1800 centimorgan level, that would be your aunts and uncles, nieces and nephews. Well, who do you cluster with those? Again, you're going to have some really big clusters because you share lots of DNA. You keep on dropping down to just, let's say, first cousins at about 600, 900 centimorgans. You're still going to have pretty big clusters because each of your first cousins you're related to two grandparents from. So default, this starts out at 250 centimorgans, which is about second cousin level. So start thinking of your clusters as a related to a great grandparent or a great great grandparent. That's probably more in line with what you're wanting to look at. So starting off at 260 centimorgans, then there is the stop the analysis at what level. And in this case, you can go down to 35 centimorgans and if you go below that, it's going to take longer to run because there's going to be more matches. It's going to run on a more powerful server. Um, so I would, you know, take it down to 35 centimorgans. So basically you're looking at all the matches you have between 250 centimorgans and 35 centimorgans. All right. Minimum shared between, we can do 10 centimorgans. That's the minimum shared. And 
yeah, we have the auto clusters checked. So when you click on the perform the auto cluster, it's going to pop up and say, hey, this analysis is going to cost you 75 credits. The auto kinship is an additional 50 credits. And since I have all my credits all, all in there, that's fine. And let's go and see. Okay. Oh, it's okay. So it's success. It started. Please check your mail after approximately 20 to 30 minutes. It usually takes a lot faster than that. Um, note the attachments are zipped and available as a downloadable link. Save the attachments to your local drive and unzip them before viewing. Details concerning this auto cluster analysis, as well as the download link, will be available on the website under the notifications. Okay, so it's not going to show up on the it's website. It's not going to show up on the website. Oh. And that's the important thing to, to recognize. It is going to be emailed to you. You're like disappointed. Yeah, I like things just being all contained in one location in case I mess up. Yeah, I understand. Um, in this case, this has a lot of data that we're going to be seeing. So let me turn that off for right now so I can go over to my website. Okay. You're going to check your Gmail real quick? Yep. I'm going to see how soon. Oh, it's not on here. <laughs> let, me go, let me go over here. So while he's checking his email, are you able to answer this question? I can try while I'm... If I can run on my heritage, what are the advantages of doing stuff in genetic affairs? Genetic affairs allows you a lot more control. Okay. Um, when you go and you try to, and you run it on my heritage, you'll see that you're actually pretty limited as far as what you can change for that. Okay. Um, the, other, the other advantage on, on genetic affairs is... You can run one or you can get the one from MyHeritage, but you can also get one from 23andMe and one from uh, Family Tree DNA. Some of your matches are going to overlap in those. Mm -hmm. Some of them aren't, which means you might have some clusters that because of the common overlapping matches between that, you can basically add all those people into one big cluster, even though they're on different companies. Gotcha. Thank you. And thank you, Jess Louise, for asking your question. Anyone, if, as you're having questions throughout the presentation, be sure to go ahead and drop them as you think of them. And then I will work them in during times like this where you have to stall or Amy has to look something up or sometimes Andy will say something and I said, what? And it doesn't make any sense. But if you go ahead and drop your question in, I'll work it into um, throughout the presentation. You don't have to wait until Q&A time. If you do have a question that you want Andy to address, if we have time at the end of this presentation, put that in the chat now um, and we will answer them in the order they are received. How close are you right now? They haven't sent it to me yet. They so. haven't sent it to you yet. So let's go over to my heritage. Okay. Since somebody asked that, let me... Add that to the stream. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. So on my heritage, in the DNA, they have the auto clusters. And so if we go over here and click on it to explore it, let me go and use my grandma. You'll notice here I can select who I want to generate this auto cluster for. How, and that also gets emailed. However, you'll notice there's nothing that I can change as far as the upper limit and lower limit. And Patricia just made a comment there. They give the auto clusters. Hold on a from, okay. They give the auto clusters from 400 centimorgans to about 100 matches. Um, and it doesn't give the auto kinship that is on genetic affairs. And so, yes, that is why using the auto kinship tool on genetic affairs allows you to um have more control over it and what you'll see is that as you change some of those parameters some of those clusters are going to change as well because it has to meet those parameters all right let me see i'm still waiting on my email for it <laughs> okay here's a question okay. while we're waiting um, hold on a second. If you only have DNA on my heritage of the acceptable ones, meaning I have it on ancestry, but this doesn't work. But in any case, 
is it not worth it to use genetic affairs? So when you say, is it not worth it? The nice thing about genetic affairs is, is you don't have to have a monthly subscription. Oh. So it, you know, popped up and said, Hey, this is going to cost 75 credits or whatever, plus 50 credits. So 100 credits is $1. So you can go and you can buy, you know, $10 worth of credits and be able to run one or two or three of these this month and then not come back to it until a year later. And you still have, you know, that other 800 credits that you haven't used yet. So it's, it's a great way to, of a pick and choose of, Hey, what do I actually need to do? I can pay for the stuff that I'm going to use and then the stuff that you're not, whether it's worth it or not, really you have to try. Um, and so in this case, you know, it, it depends again on, on, who your matches are, how they're related together, whether you're going to, going to get any useful information out of this. Uh, and so it's, like I said, when you sign up, I think they give you 200 credits free, which is enough to run a auto cluster and a kinship on at least one person, if not maybe two people. And from there you can decide, okay, does this provide me something that I need to refine and get better? So I can pay for another $10 or yeah, my family is so small or so spread out that this isn't going to help. That would be me. I had this small family problem. And Paul says, Hey, that's a lot cheaper than I thought it would be. Yeah. It's very affordable. Um, uh, my heritage came through. Yep. My heritage has come through. So let me go and download this. <laughs> so I thought you said it was going to be a lot faster. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell that he did this live for your benefit. So maybe we'll get it um, and before the stream is out. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm not sure if you can answer this just yet, but um, I have to struggle. The initial screen warned says at least three DNA matches with shared matches are required. Currently no matches with the range are available. What did I do? Okay. Say that again. So, not sure how to troubleshoot the initial screen warning, which says at least three DNA matches, which shared matches are required. Currently, no matches within that range are available. What did I do? Okay, Donna, I think uh, if were you putting in matches manually for that? I guess that's my first follow up question. Mm -hmm. All right. Um... And greetings, Marta from Warsaw. We're glad you're joining us. Um, is genetic affairs versus Jed match a uh, question mark? <laughs> um, so how do they compare? I think it's the short answer. I mean, the, the, the short question. So genetic affairs is a different tool set. Now, a couple of the tools are on GEDmatch, but like with other things, it's a scaled down version of what you find on genetic affairs, if that makes sense. The tool that's a genetic affairs license tool when it appears on GEDmatch is scaled down on that platform. That's correct. Now, and that's the thing. So this auto cluster tool is the, is the primary one that's, that's on those three. So on genetic affairs, you have full control of this auto cluster tool, okay? On my heritage, they have it preset for you. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that you can change on it. On GEDmatch, think of that as sort of in between. They do give you some flexibility as far as changing some stuff, but not as much as from Genetic Affairs. Okay. Okay. No, I know I did not so, manually enter matches. I only run in the name of the tested person. Okay. Then yeah, the problem is is you don't have any matches to be able to compare it to for the auto kinship. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And that's that's why I was doing the 23 and me is because it automatically pulls all those matches in. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so let me add. There we go. So this is one of the outputs of, that you came in the zip file from my heritage. All right, this is the cluster chart and you can see here Basically, each of these clusters are an indication that these people are all related to each other. In other words, they all share a common ancestor. 
Now, these might represent a cluster from one of your great great grandparents or triple great grandparents. It's all a matter of then you doing the research, comparing trees with them to figure out how this cluster is, is uh, related. Not all these people are going to necessarily have trees on my heritage. Um, but if you can find how three or four of them are related, there's a good chance that all of them are related through that same line. But the largest cluster doesn't necessarily mean their closest common ancestor. No, the largest cluster just means that this is the largest group of people that are related together. Mm -hmm. Now, there could be several reasons for that. You know, it could be because they all come from this big, large family. Mm -hmm. It could be that they are further apart. And so there's more people that are related um, more distantly. Paul has a question. I see all the light gray. Does that mean those individuals are related in more than one way? Yes. So for instance, let's just take this person right here, Annalie. She is part of this red cluster, but you can see here, hey, she's got all these here, which really line up with this orange cluster. So she might actually be part of both this red cluster and this orange cluster. Uh, this is clustering is one of the things that when I did it manually, you can be able to move that around and actually have these people join together better. But in this case, you just sort of have to visually see it. So what you can see here, just looking at the gray dots, there is a... That looks like a box. We there's need... a sizable amount of overlap in these first four clusters uh -huh. with some of these other people. So this might all be related through a single grandparent of yours that you're related to all of these people. Mm -hmm. Now, you might be related to each one of these clusters by a great-great-grandparent or, or a triple-great-grandparent. But you can see that, yeah, there's there's some little overlap here. Some of these may, though, be just the fact that you have two parents. You're related to them through your mom, but they're related to this other person through their dad. Mm -hmm. okay. But has what you see... Yet? Yeah, just a second here. Mm -hmm. I Well, I don't know if it has yet, <laughs> but just a second. I'm trying to go through and explain yeah. a little bit here. Mm -hmm. You can see the difference in these gray dots is that, hey, there's this blue cluster here that other than this right on the end for this purple cluster, nobody else is related to them, which to me just is a good indication then that, okay, this is another distinct family line that is, is completely separate from this one. So for instance, if I found out that, yeah, all four of these clusters are on my grandmother's side, I definitely would not expect this blue cluster to be on my grandmother's side at all. And there's, and I think that's the only one in here. I guess there's there's a couple, this blue has a few little things. You can see a few little um, dots with this one person, which may be that, okay, they're related in multiple ways through two different people as opposed to through the same lines. But yeah, we definitely have a big group here that probably is related to each other as far as each one of these clusters go. So this is the this is the initial graph that you get. And then you'll go through and it will give you the match information for those people, including whether they have a tree. So this is really useful because, hey, if you want to go and look on their tree to see how people in this cluster all match together, then this works. You'll notice that it has this cluster. So as you change these around, let's just go by largest segment. it still keeps the clusters together, okay? So I'm always gonna have my clusters of people together. All right, let's go take a look. Yay! Okay, so Genetic Affairs has come through. Let me go download the report and we'll see some differences. So you've seen here the basic report for the auto cluster that my heritage gives you. And I already told you that it's very limited. We're asking him to do a login and a password and we're keeping that off screen. <clears throat> Mm 
And now they have a prompt that says download the report. So he's downloading the report. <clears throat> I was seeing if there was a place on the, well, actually, you know what? Yeah, I was looking to see if there was a place that you could download the. Uh, after it's created. You go after back it's and created. It. There might be, hold on one second. It looks like that you. Yes. Okay. So pop up this screen again. I can do that. Okay, so back on this screen, you have the email that got sent to you, okay? Plus, in this column called mails, this is another place where you can see the emails that were sent to you. So if I click on this, then it's going to tell me, hey, we have the auto cluster link that was downloaded to you. So you can see who you've actually run one on before and click on it, and it'll actually, if you've done multiple, you can see the multiple ones. So that should prevent you from wasting credits on somebody you already did. Correct. Saving you more money. All right. Let's see here. Do I have this now? Okay. So All right. Let's go and let's share this. Okay. So we need to have you stop the present and then present again, share screen, share window. Or entire screen. Do you entire, want entire screen. screen? Is that what sure, you want? we'll do the entire screen. Okay. All right. I just can't make it big necessarily. No, not necessarily. Okay, so what I've done is I've gone, I've opened up this zip folder. And you can see in the zip folder, there is a auto cluster folder. I can open that up and there are two other folders and two items here. One of these is an HTML. We're going to go and open that one up. And guess what? That looks an awful lot. Pull it over. Oh. There you go. That looks an awful lot like what we just saw on my heritage. Mm -hmm. Except this is genetic affairs. Notice my heritage. That's the auto cluster report, genetic affairs. So wow, you have a really, really big one. Is that is it bigger because the font sizes are bigger, or is it bigger because there's more people in there? Well, it is no, I don't know that the font, I mean the font sizes might be slightly larger, but there's more people in here now. Remember though, this is from two different websites. This is polling from 23andMe. Oh, this is pulling from my heritage. There you go. Sorry, I didn't pick up on that. Nope. And, it's and okay. I knew that, but I didn't pick and up. And this has my personalized upper and lower boundary and how much they have to match. Whereas this has what my heritage automatically feeds into you. So is essentially, is that more matches that are being clustered? Well, this is a bigger cluster, mm -hmm. which might be problematic. Right. Which means I might want to change my parameters down uh, some. Because they could be some false matches, or is it just these are harder to find? There right might now. be more harder to find because this one I went all the way down to at 35 centimorgans. Correct. Um, this, I think, limits the matches to like 100 matches or something like that. I think that's what someone said. So, okay. Yeah, and the minimum threshold here is 55 centimorgans. Okay. So, there you can see what the minimum is for. For uh, my heritage, I, zoom in on that. I can't. Oh, I can. <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking I couldn't zoom in on. There you go. So over here, let's go zoom in. Here's what the matches are. It's a little better. Mm -hmm. So I can change those, you know, around to be able to get refine as far as as what it is as far as my clusters for that. Okay. Stop for a moment. And okay. Stop screen and then just share the windows because you don't have to share the the. Well, because I got the. Oh, okay. I got the other things there okay. still. Never mind. Okay, so as we go down, we have the auto kinship table. We've been waiting. This, this is what we've been waiting for. Now remember, and this is why I say these are interrelated because, hey, 
This starts with a cluster. Now remember, the whole idea behind a cluster is you're all related. The question then is, is how you are related, right? We're going to use this little one here so that we're not totally overwhelmed. And just looking at it, I already know where some of these people fit. Lucky you. Um, so each one of your clusters is going to have a link for this auto kinship. If you've clicked, if you've paid for, you know, and clicked on that auto kinship. So let me click on number. Oh, I can't even access my file. I might have to do this manually. Okay, so I've gone into the file here. So what you did, tell, take us back through what you did, um, even though it's hard to see on the screen. Yeah. Oh, I think I think it's because I haven't extracted this whole thing. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's not uh, okay. doing it. Um, but so from the auto cluster, if you extract it all, I believe the links work. Since I haven't extracted it, the links don't work. And so I just have to manually go and do that. So I was initially in this HTML of the auto cluster. That's the one that looks like the MyHeritage one. Then there is the auto kinship folder. I go into that and there's three folders for each one of my three clusters. So we're going to look at the third cluster. And you can see that there is auto kinship right here, which I've opened up. That's a Watto tool. Yes, it looks very much like a Watto tool. Very, very much so. Mm -hmm. All right. So my tested person is up here in green. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is my grandma that I'd be used for this one. And then it goes through my 11 matches for this cluster. And that's why I use this one as opposed to the one with 51. And that's also why. I would suggest that you start to bring this, your clusters down in size to something that is 20 people or less because these trees are gonna get massive if you have much more people. Now, based on how these people match and also how they match each other, it is going to construct a tree. And this is still a prediction. This is, yes. But this, unlike, if we compare to this to through lines, through lines is going through family trees to predict things. This is going through how does your match, how do you match a match? How does that match match a match? And how does that match match with the other matches? This is all genetic. Correct. Yay! And here you can see now there's, when it says this, you can notice here, hey, we have a mother-daughter pair. Now it knows that from the amount that these two share with each other. So once it knows what relationship or once it has a rough estimate of relationship with my grandma of the one, since these two are mother and daughter, it automatically knows what the other one is. And so it's basically testing both of these to see where it could be. And so whenever you have like a parent-child pair like this, it's really good because it has two data points with a known relationship that it's auto probability testing. So this line right here, I'm just looking at this and I am almost certain that this line is correct because I happen to know this person um, where she fits on the tree. I, I'm almost certain that this line is correct. Okay. These other people in general, I have no clue who they are, but I don't need to because of how much DNA is shared between them and how much is shared with my match, it has constructed this tree that I can now, like with Watto, except instead of finding, this is like reverse Watto type of thing. Watto, we would know how all these people are related and we have a person that's unrelated that we're trying to find with Watto. Yeah. This, we have a person in this case that we know. And we have all these people that maybe we don't know. And it's genetically figuring out how they would fit into a tree. Now, like you said, this is an estimate. It is not necessarily going to be exact, but this is an excellent starting point 
to be able to go and say, okay, well, MM here is, they share a great grandparents. Well, how many great grandparents do you have? Don't ask me off the top of my head. Eight. Eight. Okay. Because you have four grandparents, right? Yep. Okay. And <laughs> if you already know because of this match right here, oh, well, that great grandparent is this one great grandparent. Well, now you've you've gone down and it's like, okay, so now we're just looking at their kids. The two siblings right here of how these people are related. Okay. So now I have another question. Sure. Okay. And then I'm um, first, I want to say that Paul said this tool is great, especially since it's automatic. And then I love Stacy's. Uh, I like this grumble, grumble. I want to use it on my ancestry matches so I can figure out who a specific, few specific matches are. Amen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I will say this. At and Tech. One, one thing real okay. quick. I do want to um, thank Terry for becoming a new member. Make sure that you check the link in the description box for the webinar that's happening next. And also look for the members only playlist to access our archive. Keep going. Mm -hmm. At Roots Tech, Devin actually sat down and had a meal with Ancestry. And there's lots of people there that talked with her. And she brought up about not necessarily this specific issue, mm -mm. but DNA issues like this, you know, things like chromosome browser and DNA issues like that, that Ancestry needs to do. Right. Like, and I do, I will tell you that um, I don't know how much I can share, but I do know one of their biggest issues is how do they protect the privacy? Because Ancestry is really serious about privacy, which is why you can't have the law enforcement be involved and stuff like that. So they're trying to balance that. So if somebody has a fantastic, brilliant idea of how to solve the privacy issue so we can have a chromosome browser, send your ideas into Ancestry. That's the only reason why I'm sharing is because you share those ideas and maybe maybe we finally can get some more of these tools that we really, really like. All right. Okay. I'm off so my soapbox. Let's go down and see what else is in this report here. So we have this initial tree um with cluster three and it gives you a probability um i'm not worried about that right now when when you get into data analytics and numbers you don't necessarily need to understand that part of it so much as this is a starting point it's mm -hmm. not the be all end all it's a starting point to do your research so speaking of starting points um you know how I got really excited about the auto auto that's over on uh, 23andMe. And I was like, oh, that's an auto auto tree, right? Yep. So, but on that tree, you could move somebody around and then it would shift everybody. Can genetic can auto kinship do that? Can you move people around as you know things? No. Oh. Okay. You can't move these people around. Um, it doesn't work that way. So it's, it's not interactive in that regard. Okay. Okay. I want too much. Yeah, <laughs> That's a really do. exciting. You've got everything zipped, so you're gently. You're right. Work. So let's go to this next down here. And if you understand Watto as far as the odds of what it is, this is similar in that, hey, this has a combined odds ratio, this tree one, of 11.1. .1. So it's three three times more likely than the next one, okay? Now, we can go and look at those trees. We can click on the link if we've extracted it all, but in this case, I'm gonna click on that. That, what they're showing you is tree one, okay? So I just clicked on that and it's, oh, it looks the exact same. That's because that is tree one. Okay. So let's go and take a look at tree two and we'll flop between them. Okay, so here's tree one. I'm sorry, here is tree one. You see where everybody is? Look oh, at tree two. Oh, they moved the Ka Ka Kael or yep. something? KL. KL and David, they moved, yep. Or just KL moved. And oh, because KL was here, Angela was here. Uh -huh. So they just moved down a generation on one of them. And again, that's because there's different possibilities of how they're related. Oh, yeah, because I was like, hey, what if there's other possibilities? Yep. So here's tree three. This might look a little bit different oh, from tree two. Oh, they shrunk a generation with yeah. a Jamie or Janice. So in this case. 
as, you, as you're going, what you're given is you're not just given, hey, this is a possible starting point. Mm -hmm. Keep going. You're like reaching just, over. Just me. talk. But you're given several different possible starting points, which means the more people that you already know in this, you can start to say, okay, this set of trees is the ones I'm going to do, even though they may not be the most probable, but because of relationships that you do know, then it's going to go there. What did you do? I zoomed in. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to open up some of these other trees just to show. Yeah, and so when you, when you think about this from a Watto standpoint. This you know, is way freaking cool. This is like several. Pardon my language. <laughs> this would be several hours of, of Watto playing around to get trees that look like this. But what we have, again, and this is, think about this is, is 50 cents is what this costs to run this analysis on this one person. Maybe it was $1.25 because you have to run the auto cluster as well. But between the auto cluster and this, you've paid $1.25 and you have nine probable trees, ones you know with higher probability than others, of where the this cluster, how they are all related. Pretty darn cool, right? Um, that's as cool as the auto um the Goldie May auto research plan or the semi auto research plan. That is incredible innovation. I like that. It's it's like, so the other tool that we've done that's sort of similar to this is the auto tree on 23andMe, where it automatically creates your tree from that. Now that one, you can move people around, you yeah. know, and add people to it. Um, but let's go and let's take a look at a, this is in group number one that had 50 people. So again, it is going to try to place all 50 of these people into a tree. And here you see that the tested person is down here. There's this group. So that, that one big cluster, remember, think of that big cluster is actually made up of other little clusters. So, hey, this cluster right here, they are all from this person. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is a nice cluster within itself. They're all from this one person. If we go down a little bit more, well, oh, my grandma, is, she is actually part of this other cluster that has one, two, three, four, five, six, plus her seven people in it. And then there is this six people. So this didn't do all 50 people. This did about six, seven, seven, 21, 25 um, of those. 22, 22 matches. But what we can start to see is we can start to see how we could actually break up these big clusters, maybe that we have, into other little clusters. Um, and this one's nice because you can actually see, remember when on the other ones I was showing you, hey, whenever you have a parent-child relationship like this, it's great because the computer has a known relationship that it is testing against both of them to see how you're related. And it knows that it has to fit in like this. Well. Here we've got a parent-child with two children, even better. We've got another parent-child relationship right here. So we've got twice as much of these parent-children relationships to be able to improve the overall accuracy of that. Um, yeah. So well, questions, I guess. Let's, we're, we're getting near to time. Okay. But. Let me go through them. Um, all right, I gotta move the mic up a little bit. All right, um, I've been unable on GEDmatch to get my half mother's uncle in a cluster on our GNA. Would I have more luck doing that with the different settings on G genetic affairs? A half uncle, um, correct me if I'm wrong. I thought auto clusters were for further distant related. And so a half uncle, yeah, half they uncle's, be too closely related? Half uncle is probably going to be too close. Okay. Because um, the problem with, with that is 
when you think about it is you're going to have I'm trying to figure out how to describe this with uh, some of the information that you're seeing here. So these thresholds here are 400 centimorgans for my heritage. We had 250 at Genetic Affairs. So you're looking at second cousins, maybe first cousins once removed, but usually second cousins and more distant. So a half uncle would be sharing as much as a first cousin which is basically twice as much as what any of these would. Mm -hmm. And so you'd have to have the um, upper limit up way up high. And then the problem with that is, is you're going to have lots of clusters, uh, huge clusters because you have, but they're also going to be very scattered. And, and what I mean by that is if you take a look at this red, whoops. Okay. If you take a look at this red cluster here, it's not completely full. There's lots of holes in it. In other words, there's lots of people who aren't related to other people within the cluster. This yellow one is another one that's pretty lossy. Whereas if we just go down here to this purple one, everybody in that cluster is related to everybody else. That's that's sort of a perfect cluster. Okay. Um, with, with your uncle, the problem is it's going to pull so many matches in that it's very likely you're going to have a giant cluster, but it's going to be really lossy. And so it's not a good cluster to use. Lossy means the um, the white spaces. Yeah, the white spaces. Showing no relationship. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Lossy. That's a new word there's, to me. And that's the thing is there, there's, there's not any standard vocabulary for some of this. So I use different terms all the time um, when I'm saying this, but that's in general what I mean. So yeah, I wouldn't expect to have your half uncle in. What... What I would do, though, is you could take your half uncle and get that shared match list with him and then do a cluster analysis off that shared match list, because that would then have isolated it to that specific line. And now you'll have little clusters on that specific line, which represent different family groups on there. Okay. All right. Oh, and then Stacey said, uh, what about it since it's her half uncle, if she's using her own DNA and not her mother's, would that also make it so that he's not coming into a cluster? The half uncle? Well, and again, that's just but the thing. Half, is, half wouldn't you share something? Well, yes, because so a half uncle, you share as much DNA as a first cousin. Oh, half great uncle. A half great uncle, you share as much DNA as a first cousin once removed. Okay, it's still so close. it's still probably too closely related to really put it into a cluster report. You can on genetic affairs. You're not going to be able to on my, my heritage. heritage, and I can't remember what the limit is on Jed Match whether you can go up that high um, or not. And she's expressed her gratitude and as always, our pleasure. All right, mm -hmm. here's another question. Isn't the issue of a number of people testing a factor? My father's side, for example, has a lot of fewer people who have taken a test. That is always a factor. Um, so there's there's really two things. I know one of them. That, that affect that is one. There's not enough descendants to test. So you have small families. There's not enough descendants to test. And then two, the number of descendants who actually have tested. Now, obviously, to test, yeah. obviously, if you have really large families, there's more possibility of people testing. Doesn't necessarily mean they will test, but there's more possibility. If you have small families and everybody's <laughs> tested, you still have small families. Right. And small families is multiple generations of three, one to three kids per succeeding generation. So I'm, uh, uh, my brother and I are two, then my mom is two, my dad is a one, and before then there's a one, and before, and then there's five for dad, but then there's two, and then there's two. So there's <laughs> lots of twos and ones and threes. Whereas on my family, I'm four, my dad is an eight, um, his Your mom, mom was a two. His mom was a five. Mm -hmm. His dad was a three, but his grandpa was a five. So you can see there's a difference with when you're looking at mine of threes and fives and eights versus hers, ones and twos. Hers are all small families, except for there's like what is it, the clay boss or something on your line? You gotta go back to the second great grandparents. Yeah. And there's a 
there's a smack ton of comforts from Canada and clay balls from Virginia. And that's just because that part of the tree, they have lots of kids. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And she's just related to one of their children down through that line <laughs> who decided not to have lots of kids. And shout out to Robin Smith, a brand new member. Hope that you can find all of the great content. Look for the playlist that are members only in the title of the playlist on the playlist tab. All right. We did that one. So let's do, we've got four more we can go through. Okay. Uh, auto ship looks great. Is that similar in idea to Watto? But it, in this case, it's automatically trying to predict the link. Yes, and and what I was saying is it actually is the reverse of Watto, whereas with Watto, you have to know the links to find an unknown person. In this case, usually you have a known person. In other words, you or one of your family members that's tested, and you're finding the links to these unknown matches or the potential links to these unknown matches. So they're related. They basically work in opposite ways. Okay. Um, are you going to pull the tree you like into Wada using a text file? I haven't ever tried that, but I think you can do that. Okay. I'm going to save that here for a moment, Bruce, and maybe he'll play around with it and if it's warrants a video. Yeah, yeah, that might be a good video if I can do that. All right. So go ahead and read Paul's because I got to write him that note. I got to squint. The alt tree thing is also helpful because you don't always know where someone falls. Like with Watto, you have to already know for sure everyone else's connections. Yes. And that's why you're given multiple trees in this because there's DNA, you know, relationships when you're getting into the 20s, 40s, 50s, 100, 200, there's still multiple relationships. And when you're talking about 10 or 20 people and each one could have two or three different relationships, well, those have to fit together in a tree in a certain way. And so, yeah, you're going to have these alternative trees. There's some like that are going to be more probable than others. And so always, you know, probably start with the highest probability. But as you exhaust those, you might find that, yeah, you're lucky and happen to be on tree number eight, which has mostly the right connections. Awesome. Okay. And this is the last comment before we get ready for the passenger list presentation. Basic question, where can people get tested in order to come up in this system in the auto, the, the, the auto reverse Watto? Okay. So genetic you've got, the, auto, you've got the, the wrong one up. Hit on one of the kinship ones. Yeah. Okay. So genetic affairs in general, you want to be tested with 23andMe or family tree DNA. Now that's for a lot of their automatic tools where you don't have to enter in a lot of information. You saw what I did today. I didn't have to enter in a lot of information for my heritage, my heritage and um, family tree DNA. And even in some cases, ancestry, you can manually enter in information for some of these tools. Um, but those are the places to test. And in, in general, I usually recommend 23andMe and Ancestry because you cannot transfer other places into those databases. You can transfer an Ancestry file or a 23andMe file into MyHeritage and Family Tree DNA um, if you need to. Um, but those those are the four that, of places that you want to test or have be in their database to be able to use this tool. Okay, on genetic affairs, last question. This is the last question because it's a great question <laughs> before we left. Um, what option did you start with again? Auto cluster, auto kinship, or auto segment? Excellent, because let's go back. Where are we? <laughs> because it's confusing, okay? All right, so I'm going to go to the members homepage. Okay, if I click on run auto cluster, it's going to ask me to select one of my profiles. And it gives me this thing and I can go and click oh, on. Uh, 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 sorry, go back, go nope. back, go do it, go backwards. Oh, go back. We didn't have the screen Sorry, I have, that was my fault. I apologize. Okay. <laughs> so bad. after I've logged into Genetic Affairs, if I click on run auto cluster, it's going to come up with whatever websites I've put in. You can add in your 23andMe websites here. And it's going to ask what profiles. I'll click on the profiles. And it's going to come up with all the profiles that I have on that. And it's going to give me this option. And you can see there is just the auto cluster. There's the auto kinship, which includes the auto cluster. 
auto segment, which we haven't covered yet. We'll cover that on another video sometime. Um, Rule-based auto cluster. But in general, you can do auto kinship from either one. Or I mean, from, from here. That was, again, starting out at run auto cluster. The other way is to run auto kinship. And there's two ways to do this. There is the manual entered information in, which we didn't really go over other than in general. And then there is for 23andMe running the auto kinship, which automatically gives, goes and pulls your 23andMe data. You'll notice when I click on the profiles for this, it comes up with the exact same page. And even when I click on auto kinship, it's going to come up to this page that says perform auto cluster. The key here is, is, hey, auto kinship should be selected. That was the part I was confused because I, I saw that you clicked on auto kinship, but then the top says auto cluster. Yep. And then you have to have that thing checked. That's not exactly user friendly for dummies like me. <laughs> so if I click on the auto cluster, you'll notice, hey, it still says the same thing, form auto cluster. All this stuff is the same. The only difference is this box is unchecked, which means... I can check this box and now it's going to do the auto kinship on top of it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, there's, there's several different ways to get there. Basically, whenever you're doing the auto kinship, it's going to run the auto cluster as well. Cause it's got to have those clusters to be able to make that tree out of. And then there's an auto tree up there that you're going to have to talk. There's so many tools here. I think you're going to be busy a little while. There's lots of tools. Yes. All right. Well, that's a wrap. Thank you everyone so much for joining us today. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, share it with others, and leave a comment in the main comment session. Things you like, things you didn't like, things you wish Ancestry would do, things you're glad Genetic Affairs does, all of that stuff, put in the comments. We will be responding to them this week. And yes. I'm nudging him. Um, <laughs> and we will talk to you next time. Bye, All guys. right. Bye-bye.